Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use grid and snapping in Reaper. Now, the purpose of this video is not to go into every feature of the grid and snapping in Reaper. If you want something like that, go to the Reaper main site, click on the videos page, and go to the edit section and scroll down to this section dealing with the grid. But in this video, we're going to focus on how I use the grid and snapping in Reaper. So let's start off with a quick review. If our grid and snapping are turned off, as we can see in the toolbar, we move our items around, they're not going to snap to any grid. And if we turn on the grid, we see grid lines right here. But again, if we move our items, they're not going to snap to that grid because snapping isn't turned on. And if we turn snapping on, now the items will snap to the grid like this. And if you want to bypass that snapping, just hold down the shift key. And now they don't snap to the grid. Let go of the shift key, and they do. So that's the default behavior. And if we right click either button, that opens up the snap grid settings. Or we can use the keyboard shortcut Alt L on the PC or Option L on the Mac. Now, the first thing I want to show you is this option right here snap to grid at any distance. With this selected, and it's on by default. No matter what distance we drag this, it's going to snap perfectly on the grid. We can't put it anywhere in between. But if we turn off this option, it's then going to respond to the setting over here, snap distance. I have mine set up to 15 pixels, but you could set it smaller or larger depending on how sensitive you want it to be. So with this off, now if we drag our items, they're still going to snap, but only if we get close enough to the grid line. Anything in between is not going to snap to the grid. So it'll snap here and here and here, but anything in between, it won't. So it kind of behaves like a magnet. If we get close enough to it, it sucks into the grid. And like I said, this is on by default, but it can be more useful to turn it off because it can be more flexible to move our items in between the grid or have it snap if we get close enough using the snap distance setting. And the next thing I want to show you is this option right here. Grid snap settings follow grid visibility. This is also on by default. And with this turned on, our grid size, which is set up right here, is also going to be our snap size. They're basically the same thing, which is why if we move our items, they only snap to the grid, the grid we see visually. So if we hide the grid with snapping turned on, it's still not going to snap because we need to see the grid for it to snap to the grid. We could turn this off if we want to separate those two settings. We can set our snapping to quarter notes or anything else we want while still keeping our grid as half notes. So now it's going to snap to quarter notes here, here, and here, even though the grid is still half notes. So it separates those two settings. And in fact, if we hide our grid, it's still going to snap to quarter notes. So if you want separate settings for the grid and for snapping, we can just deselect this option right here. But it's on by default. And I usually prefer to leave it there because it makes things simpler. And we can just change our grid 
and that's going to affect snapping. So what we see with our grid is what we get. And we'll come back to that with a custom action in a bit. The next thing I want to show you is this option right here. This chooses whether the start or the end of our items snap to the grid. Right now, just the start of the item is snapping, not the end over here. And typically, that's the most useful use of it. But there are times when we want the end of the file to snap to the grid. And we could change the setting if we want that. We could change this right here to snap both start and end. And if we choose this, it's going to snap at the beginning, but also at the end. But there is a downside. It can be kind of confusing if it's accidentally snapping the end. As we're dragging over here, we notice it keeps snapping over here, which is why the default is set to only snap at the start. But there's also a third option, mouse position dependent. And if we choose this, which is not the default, now it's going to snap depending upon where we place our mouse. If we place it on the first half of the file, it will only snap the start. And if we place it on the second half of the file, it will only snap the end. Like this. It just snaps the start, not the end. But if we want it to snap on the end of the file, just grab it from the second half of the item, like over here. Now it's only going to snap on the end of the file, which is great for reverse effects or any sound that we want to end right on the grid. Just grab it here for the end of the file. Or grab it over here if you want it to snap at the start of the file. So if you find yourself snapping your items to the end quite often, check out the option Mouse Position Dependent, as it may offer a bit more flexibility than the default. Then there's an option over here that's going to snap our items to nearby items up to 10 tracks away, which is how the default is set up. Let's duplicate this item, put it right about here. And now if we grab this item and move it around, it's going to snap to this grid line or this grid line, but it's also going to snap to the front of this item, which is very useful if you want to line up your items so they all play from the same point at the beginning or even at the end of the items. So one will start while the other one ends. Very useful for removing the gaps in our files. But there are times where it can make it confusing. Like before, if I'm trying to snap right over here, and this item is really close to the grid, but not on it, it's going to keep snapping to this one instead of this one, making it easier to put it in the wrong place. So if you don't line your files up with each other very often, you might want to leave this option off and then turn it on just when you need it. So now this item is only going to snap to our grid here and here and not to this item. And if we want that function, just turn it back on right here. And now it'll snap to the item in the front or the back, removing gaps from one item to the other. But again, you might want to leave this off by default. Now earlier I mentioned creating a custom action to go with this feature, where the snapping and the grid use the same settings and are basically linked. So what I find to be useful is to turn these two items the grid and snapping on and off at the same time. So when they're off, our items aren't going to snap, and I don't see the grid. And if I turn them both on, 
the items will snap to the grid. Based on the visual, I've seen the grid lines in our project. So let's create a custom action to make turning these on and off much easier. Let's go to the Actions menu and choose Show Action List. Then we'll type into the filter Grid. We can scroll down and find this option right here. That's going to toggle the grid lines on and off, which is a keyboard shortcut Alt G on the PC or Option G on the Mac, like this Off and On. So we're going to create a custom action starting with this option. Go to New Action, New Custom Action, and that adds it right here. Let's add another one for snapping. Right over here, we can toggle snapping. So let's add this in to our custom action, and now it's going to toggle our grid and our snapping at the same time. Let's give it a name, Grid and Snapping. Save it. Now it shows up right here as a custom action. So let's give this its own keyboard shortcut. I'm going to rewrite the keyboard shortcut for the grid, Alt G or Option G, because I don't need to use it separately anymore. So it overwrites the other one. And now, if I hit that keyboard shortcut for the custom action, it turns off my grid, and my snapping at the same time. No grid lines and no snapping behavior. But if I hit it again, it toggles them both back on. So now I see my grid lines, and they're also going to snap to the grid lines, based on the concept that what we see is what we get. If we see the grid lines, it's going to snap to them. And if we don't, it's not. So I find this to be a simpler and quicker way to work. To turn them both on at the same time for snapping and turn them both off at the same time so it doesn't snap. Now there's one other custom action that really helps out with snapping and our grid. Let's go back to the action list and type in grid. And right over here, there's an action to double the size of our grid. So if it's quarter notes, it's going to turn it to half notes or half notes to whole notes, and so on. And there's another action right here, which is going to cut it in half or do the opposite. So if it's a whole note, it'll be a half note or a half note to a quarter note, and so on. So these two actions I find to be very useful. And there's no keyboard shortcuts assigned to them by default. So let's add some. For this one, I'm going to make it Control on the PC or Windows on the Mac and Page Up. And then for this one, the same thing but Page Down. So now, without having to open up this window, and change the sizes. We can just use the keyboard shortcuts and very quickly change the size of our grid. Now it's quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, or go the other way to make it larger. And because we created that custom action, we could hide it all and have no snapping and no grid. Show it, change the size of it to whatever size we need. It just makes it a lot quicker to turn both options on and off at the same time and also readjust the size of our grid. Larger or smaller with just a few keyboard shortcuts. So that's pretty much it. That's how I use grid and snapping in Reaper. Hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.
Bye.